Well, they don't call him Rocket for nothing, do they? Blimey. This guy was up for pre-order about 11 months ago, and he just dropped out of nowhere. Just to put that in perspective, I also ordered the Endgame Armored Thanos, and I have been waiting for, well, since January, for them to actually drop the next batch. I'm literally waiting for my seller to get their batch. It's been six months since the first batch, and I'm still sitting here waiting. So color me surprised when this guy turned up on my doorstep. Now, I don't know what's going on with Hot Toys. I don't know how it's all gone a bit ski if you know, some things get pumped out quicker than others. Some factories do certain things, other factories do others, and some things can come out just a little bit more expedited than other figures. But I did raise this concern with Howard Chan. I sent him an email and lo and behold, he actually replied. And I'm quite surprised by that, if I'm honest. I didn't think he would. Now, quick disclaimer, I had to run this through Google Translate and also it may not actually be the Howard Chan because I'm not even sure if I got the right email address. But here's his reply. Dear Billy, thank you for taking the time to inquire about the inconsistent release dates of several of our figures. While we strive to meet the expected release dates for all of our figures, sometimes that may not be possible. So with that in mind, I'd just like to ask you to shut your damn mouth. Just shut it. Keep your overprivileged dumb mouth closed. You have no idea about the sheer logistics involved with releasing a licensed figure to market. We have to coordinate hundreds of different people to ensure the level of quality control our customers have come to expect. The sheer amount of headaches I have just trying to make sure the crotch in Ant-Man's suit isn't too baggy, or the amount of times I've cried signing the million dollar checks required for Robert Downey Jr's likeness rights. I can't remember the last time I took a dump without someone sliding a sheet of paper under the door for me to read and sign. For once, I'd just like to pass my bowels in peace. And now I have to answer moronic questions like yours. Seriously, I think I speak for all of Hot Toys employees when I tell you that you can go fly yourself. Just fly off and let me get on with what I do best, you complete and utter calm. I hope this has alleviated some of your concerns. Should you have any more stupid questions, then please feel free to print them out, roll them up, and then shove them up your chocolate chimney. Yours sincerely, Howard. How, how, Howard Chan there. What a guy, huh? Big fan. Big fan. Here's the intro. Okay, let's finally get on with the actual figure review. And here is the box for Avengers Endgame Rocket, the 1-6 scale collectible figure numbered MMS 548 by Hot Toys. And as you can see, it's got quite a nice design on the front. Don't get used to this face. You're not going to see this face on the figure itself. That's my first annoyance. Would it be nice if they put a picture of the face sculpt you're actually going to get? It's a nice picture all in all, but it's definitely not what is advertising inside the box. But again, it's got this nice big A there. It's quite similar to the Avengers Infinity War lot, except for a few tweaks here and there, including colours. But yeah, very nice big A there. Picture of the character. Turn it to the side. Nice spot for Guardians of the Galaxy logo up there. Then down here, we've got a nice spot for Avengers logo. On the back, we've just got all the usual warnings with a little bit of Galaxy image on the side. This side is the same. And that's the slip cover. Now let's just pull the slip sleeve off. And you've just got a window for the figure. You've got a Guardians of the Galaxy logo in the bottom right hand corner. On the side, you've just got a little bit of a futuristic little design there. On the back, nice Avengers logo, cast and crew. Similar up the top, Marvel Avengers Endgame on the bottom. Okay, let's uh, get the figure out and have a look at it. Okay, so I've just taken him out of the packaging. I've put a pair of goggles on his head and I've put the sculpted scarf on there just to um, complete the figure because when you first get him out, you'll be able to tell that it does look a little bit off because of his long neck. So you will have to put a scarf on him. I actually do like the sculpt. The body and the head sculpt we've already seen. I believe it's, you know, stems back to Guardians of the Galaxy 2 version rocket. The suit is new. The uh, boots are new. The gauntlets and the hands are new. The scarf. 
basically all the suit. And that's probably why he came out a bit quicker was because they pretty much had everything there except for the clothing and the accessories. So they just tweaked a few things here and there and then just pumped the whole batch out. Let's just have a quick look at everything that he actually has with him. First of all, he comes with two sets of goggles. They are magnetized and they come off and they can just stick to the top of the head. Or you can actually put these ones on to the front of his face and they again are magnetized and are held on there pretty nice and i really like how that looks because they actually see the uh, eyes through the lenses and the lenses are a little bit convexed so they actually are quite effective and here they are up close you can see they've got a nice little bit of dry brushing in there although it's hard to distinguish the sculpt but you can see that the uh, convection and the lens is distorted when you look through it to make it look like real glass and the same on these ones. You see the little magnet there for it to stick onto the head. I really like how they've actually managed to do this. They've made some big improvements since, well, the first rocket, which I have. I'm going to show him in a minute. But um, other than that, I do have a few gripes with the figure. But before we get into that, let's just have a quick look at all the accessories. Okay, first off, let's have a look at this scarf. This is actually a fabric scarf and it does have a wire in there. So you can pose it around. And then when you put it on him like that, it can be a bit more of a dramatic effect. Plus, some people would actually prefer fabric scarf. I'm actually quite liking the sculpted scarf on him, to be honest, because it does actually sit really nicely on the body. It drapes down naturally. It looks really good and it's well weathered. If you want a fabric scarf, you get it. But also the sculpted is very effective as well. Next up, we get the uh, nano gauntlet and it looks it looks reasonably okay. It's just a fixed sculpted accessory. There's no articulation in the fingers, which is a bit of a shame, but um, it's okay painted. Um, there's a certain few bits in. There's a, a paint defect on the front here. I can't even show it, but there's a bit of a line there. And um, yeah, it looks okay, but uh, I just, I wish it had been a bit more clean around here, but how as ever. It's quite effective. You can have him holding it under his arm, or you can have another character with it. It's nice to get these sort of end game specific accessories because they're gonna look great, especially if you're gonna collect the whole range. All of these things together are gonna work really well. He also comes with the uh, ether extractor, which actually looks, now that I look at it, it's like a sonic screwdriver. But we can see that it's actually got the ether showing in there, nice translucent red, some dry brushing on the metal, and it's actually got some nice sculpting details just in here, very fine, very nice. Wait, hang on, sonic screwdriver, big scarf? Nah, can't be. Anyway, moving on, let's have a look at the guns. He comes with four guns, which is really nice. This is the slightly larger pistols that he carries around. They're very nicely painted. I actually like all the weathering inside the yellow bits here. However, there are no moving parts. I do believe they are just simply fixed. There's a nice metallic sheen in there. Nice details going along the barrel. You can actually see there's actually another barrel inside through the holes. Looks really good. And this is one of the pistols that he comes with. It's very nice. Again, no moving parts, but I like the uh, weathering they've managed to put in these yellow bits. Nice and shiny. They always manage to make plastic look like metal. Rare talent. Yeah, very effective. He also comes with three extra hands. He's got the two sort of semi-relaxed hands. He actually looks like he's uh, gearing up for a, a shooter, doesn't he? Which is really cool. And he also comes with three other hands. But um, it's an uneven amount. You sort of get left and right trigger hands. But you also get a right gripping hand, and I believe this is for him grabbing the ether. And then he has these two hands, and I think he can hold the uh, gauntlet under his arm with these hands here. But that's about it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything out and I'm going to have a bit of a play around with him and actually see the pros and cons of the actual figure itself. Looking at the head sculpt, it's really nice. I know it's a repurposed one from Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Infinity War version, but uh, yeah, this is the first time I'm seeing it in the flesh. So I'm really impressed by it. I think it's far nicer than the actual original Rocket Raccoon that they released as part of the Guardians of the Galaxy 1 set. The fur is uh, really nicely sculpted, very detailed, and they've got this really nice paint application in there where if you sh turn it into the light, it sort of reflects a little bit, sort of like a bronzy shimmer. 
very much like real fur so they've actually nailed that it's much better than the original if i bring out the original rocket raccoon here we can see that the uh paint application has come a long way since then there's a nice shine and shimmer to this guy here whereas on the original rocket it's a bit more matte and it's a little bit more dry brush centric without any bells and whistles and obviously the sculpt is far more detailed and well painted absolutely adore the glossiness in the eyes brings the sculpt to life and the teeth and tongue are perfect but um, it would have been nice if they'd given us a sort of similar head sculpt to this because this one expression for if this is going to be your one and only rocket that one expression isn't going to work for everything for example i saw some promo photos of him kneeling down hugging Groot while he's sort of disappearing after the snap and it just looked like he was screaming in his face or laughing maniacally in his face as he was disappearing rather than looking sad so it's not going to work for everything. However, it is a very nice expressive head sculpt. So if they were going to give us one head sculpt, I'm glad they gave us this one. However, it would have been nice to have two. Coming down into the suit, and as we look at the scarf, we can see that the uh, plastic one sort of drapes nicely down the back. Fits very well and it looks very natural. I'm very pleased with that. But this suit is actually made of um, some sort of sort of fabric but with some sort of rubberized screen printing over the top like a lot of their suits they've been making lately so you know like a bit like the uh, spider-man figures and uh, one of the problems you're going to get is that when you're bending the arms it's going to get caught up in the suit and apparently these like to stick to each other so after a while you're going to have to undo this and you can see the joints are already showing through that suit however details wise it's really nice there is a very subtle weathering to it not a lot but it's pretty good i really like that belt there very nicely detailed you can actually see the buttons on the buckles these are a nice uh, sort of soft plastic and then down here you can see there's a separation here he's got like sort of stretchy lycra on that's really good i like that it gives you a sort of more of those sort of mezco feeling figures where they've actually got that stretchy fabric that can actually take a little bit of punishment but unfortunately that screen printing over the top does actually take away from it We've got some nice knee pads on there and the boots and i really like the boots because they're actually able to let him stand a lot more confidently than say the original rocket feet did because the joints get a little bit loose and there's a lot of upper body weight which can make it very difficult for him to stand on his own my original rocket swan dived many a time okay one of the issues i have when moving the neck around is when you move this forward and back it catches on the back of the suit here and it feels like that's going to start rubbing and fading away and if that starts peeling it could actually run down the back and start peeling there as well but while we're here let's have a look at the back of it really like the sort of details there the little elbow pads they're cute and this shoulder armor here it's very effective it's very nice however when you bring it up it does start to rock up and put a big gap in between there which doesn't look too good so if you're going to have this guy up like that you're just going to have to accept that there's going to be light coming through there. Do like those forearm gauntlets. Nicely detailed, nicely weathered, as you would expect. The hand came off, it was a little loose. But um, if you do break one of the wrist pegs, don't worry, they do give you spares, wrist pegs, and I think maybe an ankle peg as well. Which is very handy. I like this bit in here, that's really nice. Okay, just quickly, here he is with the fabric scarf on. Again, it's nice and bendable. You can move it around. So if you are more of a fan of the fabric scarfs, you can fight with this and get it on there looking really cool. But with the posing, you can turn this guy's head all the way around. However, you will get maybe possibly a bit of paint rub down the bottom here if you're not careful. Be careful with this neck piece here. If you are going to pose it, just be wary of that back bit. The arm can go up about that high, but unfortunately it does bring a big gap there. This arm comes up about that high, but then it sort of drops down to about shoulder length. Comes down, there is bicep swivel. There is a double bend in the arm, so his arms can come in nice and close. However, be careful with the suit. And then the hands are on a wrist peg. However, they are restricted with that forearm gauntlet. However, they can fully turn around. Torso, it can turn a little bit, but there is padding in this suit here. It feels a bit rubbery, but it can turn about that much. He does have some uh, ab crunch there. Lean 
back about that far. There is a thigh swivel. His legs can come up to about there. There is a double bend in the knees. However, this piece of armor can restrict it after that. And there is ankle pivot left and right and full 360. Okay, while trying to pose him, it can be a bit difficult because these hands sort of get popped off by the gauntlet a little bit. So they're a little bit restricted. Okay, and getting him into a position where he can hold that gauntlet is a bit difficult because that actual forearm gauntlet is actually causing problems with the restriction of moving the hand across so he can grip that firmly. So it's kind of in there, but it isn't perfectly in there as i would hope it would be this is as advertised it's not like they actually changed a lot of stuff up it is exactly what they were showing you were going to get in the actual prototype however i would have liked them to have done a bit more of improvement tweaks on it here and there and one of the things they could have done was actually include a head sculpt where there was actual some sculpting into the actual head it's there so you could have these goggles and have them with a actual strap on so you could put it all the way around you don't really get the effect of them actually being strapped goggles if you're going to try and have the arms up i would say take off the hands and the forearm gauntlets because then as you lift them up and you're twisting the bicep round you can then bring the fabric back around to straighten it up which will sort of help without getting the creases in. However, there's not much you can do with that shoulder powder in there. Okay, another little bugbear is when you're putting these sort of larger guns into his hand, they sort of, you've got to twist them in the right way, otherwise they're not going to fit properly. And even when you do, they're actually a little bit loose. And it could be because the hands are actually really soft. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I wish the hands were a little harder so that the guns could fit in a little better. But that's him John wicking it up. She looks really cool, I think. He, again, he's better in action poses. However, the suit can make that a little bit more complicated, which is a shame. But it is what it is. I mean, he's a CGI character. It's not like he was a real living creature with a real fabric suit on. It was all CGI. So Hot Toys are trying to do their best with computer-generated image. And I think they have actually done really well. Overall, I do like what you're given. He does come as advertised. However, I do think they had room for improvement with the secondary head sculpts. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if there was anything really they could do with the suit. It was pretty much either do the screen printing or don't do it at all. So, you know, I'm glad they did it. My praise of the figure really outweighs the minor gripes because he is a really, really great looking figure. The paint is fantastic. I absolutely love the fur. Those little whiskers are really effective and they're a little bit straighter than the original version. I do like the goggles, could have done with a strap. I like the magnets and they're good and strong, but without causing any problems like scratching of the paint. I really like the scarves. You can have the fabric or the sculpted, it's your choice. The guns are great. It would have been nice for him to have a massive gun, but that's not really how he was in the movie. So I understand. I do like that uh, nano gauntlet, however it is a little bit lacking in the paint department and there is no articulation. That could have been improved on, but it's still a nice accessory. And the ether extractor is very specific to Rocket, so I'm glad they included that too. Posing wise, yeah, I can get him in some really good action poses. You're probably not going to have him just standing there calmly, because at the end of the day his face does not portray calmness but it does capture the essence of the character quite a lot. He is a very loud, aggressive character, so they've managed to capture that perfectly. Should you buy it? Depends. Do you have the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 with the two head sculpts version? If so, only buy this if you definitely need the end game specific rocket with the goggles on his head. If you can get the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 version with the aero rig and the two head sculpts, that's probably the penultimate rocket that they have released to date. However, this is the end game specific rocket, and I think it is very effective to portray him in that movie. And I absolutely love the scarf and goggles. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. If you can do me a favor now, if you can get the fly out of my cave, I'm going to go put this guy on the end game shelf. Sans the armored Thanos that should have been here already. Bye bye, guys. Oh. I just got another email from Howard. Let's have a look. Let's see what he said. Dear Bill. Oh, no, 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 I definitely can't read that out. That is some 
salty language. Bye bye.